hell was that? Gas, gas! Anyone in Mach 4? Welcome everyone, it's Matsmus. I appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're going to go over something a little different today. It's something that I think really needs to be covered because it's not covered enough. And unfortunately, I, I don't really like talking about this topic because for the most part, it just makes me kind of feel sick inside. Unfortunately, in the world we live in today, there are still some sick people out there who have decided upon themselves to continue making chemical weapons. Yes, you know, you'd expect to see this in the First World War and, you know, when Saddam was still in power and all that good stuff, mustard gas, etc, etc. Unfortunately, it's still happening today. And as a military force in the Western world and any kind of uh, nation out in uh, NATO needs to learn how to protect itself against chemical, biological, radioactive and nuclear attack, also known as NBC or nuclear, biological and chemical attack. Now, honestly, um, there is no cruder, more foul way to kill a human being than chemical warfare. It is one of those forms where it's not just about killing someone, it's, it's about suffering. Um, chemical agents are not there to kill you quickly, for the most part. Um, they're there to make you suffer. Depending on the type of agent, it can be a very prolonged, graphic, violent death, or it can be a very quick, instant death, depending on the kind of agents used. Now, during my time in the British Army, uh, we did do a training exercise of about two weeks in Poland, uh, practicing with the um, Americans, and I think, I'm not sure the other nation at the time that we were practicing with, uh, NBC drills. And as you can see, these gentlemen here are actually decontaminating the Leopard tank um, with a foam, and it is a nightmare. It is an experience that I never, ever want to do again, and we are going to at some point probably have to do this training again when I join uh, the Canadian military, I don't know, we'll see, um, but hopefully not to the extent that I did it in the British Army. Now, for those of you who are going into a military career, be advised that you are definitely at some point going to be doing some sort of chemical uh, training or nuclear training. You're going to obviously go into the gas chamber um, to practice your masking up drills, which is extremely important. Don't be scared of it. Don't be nervous of it. Take it in stride. It's very important that you, you know, you know what you're doing. Um, yes, it is a little nerve wracking knowing that, you know, it's tough to breathe with CS gas, but you're not in any danger. They'll, they'll look after you. So just make sure you do the drills correctly and you'll be fine. Overall, though, when you go on a full training exercise and do a full decontamination process, I mean, these guys are skipping certain stages, obviously, because they don't want to be soaking wet, and you'll see that throughout some of this footage. But for the most part, they really do everything to a T. Some exercises are a lot more stringent and strict than others. Uh, some of them kind of just walk through the motions. Others actually will go to the very bone of the exercise, i.e. they will strip you down, strip the vehicles down, for the most part, and clean every single piece of a kit and bodily part that you have. Um, it's scary, guys. It's a scary environment to be in because it really brings the realization to you that this could happen. There is definitely a realistic opportunity at some point for someone out there to use these weapons, and it's bloody scary. Now, you'd think that being in a vehicle would help protect you. You know, you're in a sealed unit, there's all these new systems in place. Yes, of course they are. They're very helpful at protecting you. But remember, guys, there's only so long those systems can last. There's only so long the seals will last. And again, there's only so long before you have to open up those hatches and get out to do things. And that's part of your job. You're not there to just sit in your vehicle all day. It is a military force. You're there to prevent another attack happening or find the people who are creating the attack. Or, just like these gentlemen here, assist with decontamination of civilian equipment or military equipment. It's not as simple as just close your hatches and wait for it to disappear. No, no, no. That's not what these exercises are about. These exercises are about not only decontaminating the kit, but trying to find the source of the problem and, you know, dealing with it. You may need to fight in these environments. It's not as simple as just, you know, oh, we've been attacked. Okay, well, let's go decontaminate. No, no, no. You will need to put your equipment on and go and find the source and hunt it, kill it, and stop it from continuing. Now, I hope 
to God, and I personally mean this in every sense of the word, because this is a topic that I take very seriously. I hope not one of us ever have to go into one of these environments in the armed forces or in the civilian world. It is the most disgusting form of attack on human beings. Um, of course, any kind of conflict is, is very bad, but I think this definitely brings to light some of the most horrible atrocities that humans can do upon one another. This is why I'm talking about this subject today, guys, because I thought it was really relevant to those who are wanting to join, that this is definitely a possibility for you as a career, too. Um, you do have the ability to specifically trade up into a CBRN unit, which goes out and pretty much just decontaminates equipment and people. It's not as simple as just washing down equipment. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of other side parts to that, whether it be looking for the source, testing of other uh, units, um, all sorts of stuff comes into par, and it's not a simple job. It's not, you know, just a washing unit. Uh, there's a lot more to it, and I have a huge respect for these kind of units, because I can tell you this much, I could never do it. Uh, it would drive me nuts. When I went on the exercise in Poland, I was soaking wet almost for two weeks, because whenever you went into the contaminated zone, which obviously wasn't really contaminated, well, it's Poland, so you never know. I'm just kidding, Poland, I'm just kidding. But when you went into the contaminated zone, you'd have to be washed every single time you got back out of the vehicle um, into the decontaminated zone, and they'd check over your vehicle. You'd have to do a full de-kit of your vehicle. It'd have to be completely washed down um, by the contamination units. It was just a very long, drawn-out process. Not only that, but you're wearing a respirator nearly 70% of the time for that two weeks. It is savage on your body. Trying to do day-to-day -day tasks, especially like recovering uh, heavy-duty vehicles and tanks, winching them out, heavy equipment that you're lifting, uh, even just trying to see things properly is just a nightmare. That's not even, let alone, fighting in this equipment. I mean, trying to do section attacks and, you know, your personal drills, weapon handling and stuff, it's, it's just... 10 times more difficult. It's not fun at all. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to breathe for the most part in certain gas masks. I have seen the new British Army respirators they have now, so they look fantastic. I've heard really good things compared to the S10, which I was used to, uh, but it still did the job. So let's go over some key CBRN facts and things that you should probably be well aware of before going into any kind of MBC environment. So, first of all, what does MOPP stand for, or MOP? Well, this is the US military's version of basically what kind of uh, dress state you should be in for chemical environments. It's called Mission Orientated Protective Posture. Basically, what do I need to wear in a particular environment? Because it changes. When you're given an NBC attack warning, you have to mask up immediately, and you're given six seconds to do so. Literally, gas, 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 which is the command that's given. You have to put your mask on as fast as humanly possible and then begin putting on the rest of your equipment. Uh, the proper masking procedure is to stop breathing, close your eyes, don your mask, clear the mask by pushing out all the air as quickly as possible by shouting gas, gas, gas. Check the seal of the mask and then sound alarm again to others to make sure that the mission can continue and you're not losing troops around you. Like I said, CBRN stands for Chemical, Biological, Radiological and Nuclear Attack. It's not always about chemicals being flown around in the air, it can be down to nuclear attack. You gotta remember, nuclear weapons still exist, it's not always about chemical weapons. You may need to decontaminate yourself from radioactivity that could potentially still be in the air. There are three types of alarms, an audible alarm, an automatic alarm, otherwise known as a computer alarm, and visual signals, old school, like flags and hand signals. There are different types of chemical agents too. Vapors, solids, liquids, and gases, which all have their own decontamination process. Of course, there are different ways of being able to avoid contamination, and the fundamentals of NBC are avoid contamination in the first place, protect you and equipment around you, and then finally decontamination, which is one of the most important processes. You should have your injector or auto-injector around you at all times to allow you to potentially cover you from sarin attacks or nerve agent attacks. And you only have about 10 seconds to put that injector into your body once you have detected that kind of uh, vapor in the air. Basically, you don't have much chance in a sarin environment or nerve agent environment. Uh, you'd be very lucky if you, you know, did make it. There are nine symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. Unexplained runny noses, unexplained headaches, sudden drooling, difficulty seeing, tightness in the chest or difficulty breathing, localized sweating and muscular twitching in areas of contaminated skin, stomach cramps, nausea, and basically, uh, well, your heart stopping. <laughs> Um, there are other different types of smaller symptoms like wheezing, red eyes, uh, severe vomiting, and uh, convulsions, but they tend to happen when you're literally just about to die. 
Chemical agents can be deployed in five different ways. Aterial spray, artillery bombs, individuals, i.e. like polluting water or food or supplies, mines and rockets. Surprisingly, the best time that they would use chemical agents and one of the worst environments for you to be in when it is that time is evenings and early mornings. This is because there's a lack of wind and sun and this allows the agents to persist and stick to a majority of the equipment, people and vehicles. So if you ever did come into a training environment, which at some point I'm sure you will if you are applying for the armed forces, be aware that you are going to be wet. And I mean all the time wet. Uh, you think that you're going to be finished up decontaminating and then they'll take you away and they'll send you on another patrol. You'll come back and everything will have to get decontaminated again and you'll keep repeating the process. Literally, rinse and repeat. Um, it's, you know, one of those processes that just adds so much time to everything. Simple thing like, you know, just going to the bathroom takes forever. Something like getting out the truck a cab takes forever. Um, of course, all your kit, for the most part, gets covered in this special powder, which is actually there to prevent, um, you know, contamination seeping in through your, your mop suits, uh, charcoal wipes, all sorts of gross stuff that you got to put on your equipment. It smells, you don't smell good, uh, it sticks into your skin, it's just nasty. Um, but honestly, guys, if you are going into the armed forces and having to do this kind of training, take it seriously, please. At the end of the day, we, it will probably never happen, and let's hope it doesn't. But if it does, you don't want to be the guy flapping around in the background who has no idea what he's doing because he wasn't paying attention and taking it seriously on the field training exercise. Guys, that's it for today. Uh, I don't want to talk about this topic too much, but I really just thought I'd throw it a little bit out there to inform those who are wanting to join um, that this is something, and uh, realistically, something you definitely will be doing uh, and practicing at some point during your career. Uh, please don't be scared of the gas chamber when they put you through basic training. It's nothing to be feared of. Uh, just do your drills correctly. Uh, taste a little bit of CS gas for literally about 30 seconds, maybe more. Actually, I had a really rough one. I had about three minutes because uh, I couldn't get my full army number out at the time. I was struggling. Most people can't, but uh, you'll do fine. But for the most part, guys, take it seriously, please, when you go on these exercises. I've, I've noticed when I went on the Polish exercise, a lot of people didn't take it seriously. And I'm like, you know what? If I was in that environment with that person, I'd be very worried for my life and the rest of my platoon slash company's life. So please take these exercises seriously. Uh, they're not there to, you know, to mess you around. It's it's done in such a methodical way that's protect you and others' lives. And when you're dealing with some of the, the agents that are out there and capable of killing you, trust me, it can take a matter of two or three seconds of incompetency to kill you. So just be smart about it. I hope today's video gave you a little bit of information about uh, CBRN. Of course, it's a huge topic. I could spend all day on it. But I just thought I'd kind of discuss quickly the kind of things you should be expecting and what can happen during your process when you're doing this kind of training. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please hit that like button and comment. And if you want to support my channel, then hit my Patreon link in the description box below. All the best. Bye-bye.